All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, as you can see, we are back with the lovely 325IS project. All right, fair warning, this video is gonna be a little bit all over the place. I have done a lot of things in the last two weeks for this car, two, three weeks, whatever, um, and I just don't film it. So as the series progresses, as you've seen, I film kind of less and less, and I just put everything into one update video and then I save the exciting stuff for on camera. So today is just gonna be a general update. I'm gonna show you everything that's going on with the car. I'm gonna show you what changed and uh, what I plan to change. And hopefully we'll take it on that second test drive today. If you watch the first one, you could probably imagine I'm a little bit, like just a tiny bit nervous about it, but should be okay. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. So right off the bat, I know the car's in the garage. It's never good lighting in here, but I wanna show you these wheels I got for the car as my burner set. So here I have my very first set of uh, Style 32. So I've always had my eye on these as OEM wheels. Uh, if you guys have followed my channel for any amount of time, you know that uh, I'm a big OEM plus like wheel guy as in terms of these cars. I like to run OEM wheels when I can. And Style 32s are pretty cool. These came up for 250 bucks on Marketplace. My buddy Connor was actually able to pick them up in the Bay Area and then me and my buddy Justin went and got them. Uh, so he picked them up, held them for me, and then we got them. I also came home with a few other things that I did not anticipate on, but we'll go over that. So I finally have a solution for this. This hood sucks. This is the hood I received with the car. And I think what happened is the hood came up, they had never latched it or something, and it shattered the glass. They replaced the glass, because the glass, there's no cracks or anything, and this gasket is brand new. Um, but they didn't fix the hood, so whenever they mounted it back, they just mounted it super bent, and it chewed up these fenders, and it just, this whole hood makes the car look, I don't know, junk. So, I finally found a hood. But you gotta know, I'm not that lucky, and uh, unfortunately, while I would have loved to find a white hood, we got a green one instead. So, uh, yeah, we have a green one. It actually, now that I'm looking at it, has a, a substantial dent right here that I did not realize. I'm wondering if that was from transport. Very well could have been, man. <laughs> so I picked up this hood for a hundred bucks. Whether I'll use it or not is to be determined, but I figured this could be something that I can have like a paint project on, you know, I can actually uh, sand this and and use some some body filler and stuff and learn how to do all that do like a single stage of alpine white and you know Have a, a hood that's not as bad as the one that's on the car, but like stuff like this that I did not see initially um, If I can't fix that then I won't run the hood because there's no sense in Doing body work and painting the hood for it to still have some damage like that so I know the car is not gonna be perfect, but um, this is just an option. Just figured we'd pick this up while we were out there. Okay, this is crazy because this, <laughs> this has been sitting on my side yard for ages. But if you know what this is, which it would blow my mind that anybody knows what this is, to be honest, because I had no idea what this was. This is actually an OEM skid plate offered by BMW for select model convertibles. So at some point I will refinish this, paint it black, um, and this will be cool because we'll protect our uh, stance car oil pan and uh, though the oil pan sits above the frame rails uh, It'll still be nice to have something like this because the car that I have didn't come with an x-brace And I don't want to buy one so be the perfect opportunity to finally refinish this because it's chipping pretty bad Just sand it and paint it whatever slap it under the car. It's an OEM piece, which is super cool and nobody's ever gonna see it But it will be cool has a little rare part to have on the car I want to show you guys the engine bay as uh, my gasket finally came in for the valve cover. I'll show you what I did. And if you didn't watch last video, long story short, I took this thing out for its first test drive. And somehow, some way, the coil packs like corroded and literally like just, I don't know why they did that. I have never seen it in my entire life. I don't know if it was a weird resistance issue. Um, or if the coil packs were just faulty from sitting or I don't know. So I had never seen that happen and I really hope that issue does not repeat itself because coil packs are very expensive. And I swapped over to an M50 cover and we're gonna talk more about that in a second. All right, so I'm sorry if uh, you've seen this a million times and it's kind of boring, but I'll go over it for anybody new. This is an M52 B25 in my 325IS. I retain the OBD1 harness, so it's still a OBD1 car, runs off of 
an OBD-1 engine harness. So I converted the M52 to OBD-1 and really that's not that hard, only a few things that need to be changed. However, the main thing that I wanted to change originally that I didn't do was the valve cover. The only reason I didn't do that originally was because I had ordered a gasket kit for an M52 and as I'm assembling everything, uh, you know, I realize that, that I don't have a M50 gasket to run an M50 cover. So I just put the M52 gasket on with the M52 coil packs, drive the car for the first time, coil packs melt. I figure, okay, it's a good time because I'm pulling the valve cover off already to check everything um, to swap this cover on. So now it has an M50 cover. I'd say the pro to this will be that uh, it's not gonna warp because it's not plastic, so it shouldn't be warping, um, shouldn't be cracked or anything, especially if you go with the proper torque sequence. Um, so we shouldn't have any issues with the valve cover anymore. And the other cool thing you'll notice is the engine's kind of pretty now. It kind of looks like a BMW engine again, um, at least with the with the beauty covers here. So I have the cover for the fuel rail and the cover for the valve cover, which is pretty cool. So. It looks pretty proper in here now, and this was already painted. Uh, it's not perfect, but I mean, if you look at this engine, you, you really can't tell it's an M52. The only thing that gives it away is the oil filter housing. If I had swapped housings, I mean, you would look at this, see that the thermostat housing is aluminum, see that it's got the M50 manifold, M50 cover. I mean, you would have no reason to believe that it's not an M50, but it is in fact an M52 that's an OBD-1 M52. So yeah, now I'm back to putting oil back here instead of up here. Um, but I do want to show you guys the spark plugs because I did get a few comments about the spark plugs and questions about how those looked, so I will show you. Alright, here are plugs 1 through 6. As you can see, they're pretty black. I wish the camera would focus a little bit better, but it won't. Um, yeah, so this is 1 through 6. They're pretty fouled out and I think mainly because of this car running in limp mode when I got it running initially. I think that was what was happening. Uh, so it's super rich, just dumping a bunch of fuel uh, and then all the cold starts in between. And it's just crazy looking at these because these only have like a mile of runtime on them, maybe two miles. So it's pretty crazy. Again, you can go back and watch the video where I show you these coil packs, but they're all split inside and this is probably one of the better ones but uh yeah you can go back and watch that if you wish so all i did is in terms of fixing my car i'm going to be real honest here all i've done is swapped to fresh spark plugs a operating set of coil packs and um i actually added a ground strap i looked at a friend's car and um i couldn't find a clear answer online as to how many grounds i needed uh, for this specific engine and when you start swapping stuff in different chassis especially this being a 95 car everything gets all the information gets a little convoluted so it's hard to keep track of um, but it should be relatively the same for all six cylinder cars to my knowledge there should be one in the front one in the back and then the ground that actually comes off of like the sub harness for the coil packs and i think there's actually even one in the middle that's supposed to connect bank one and bank two or uh i guess three and four I'm not 100% sure, so please don't quote me on any of that. That is just like what I got from doing some Google searches. So yeah, I added a ground strap because I only had one initially, so now I have the one in the front and the one in the back, plus the one off the sub harness. So I guess three total, but as far as what's actually connected to the coil packs, there are now two instead of one. So that's what I'm gonna try today. If it works, it works. I just need to find a little bit more of a consistent issue. Um, that's been my main concern. I wanna find the problem. But if it's not doing anything consistently, uh, it doesn't really give me anywhere to start. Um, and even driving the car, it's kind of hard to tell what's fuel and what's spark uh, as in terms of when it's cutting out. So anyways, uh, I'm gonna stop rambling. I'm gonna kind of put this car back together as much as I can, get it ready for its second road operation test. So, we are test driving the 325 right now. It's very, very loud. It's much louder than I remember, even from like two weeks ago. But so far, how does it feel, Gabe? It feels pretty fucking good, man. It's pretty good, and it's actually running really right. Um, it's running how I want it to. Uh, so I'm gonna flip a bit with that welded. It 
doesn't seem to be running nearly as rich as the vehicle for. I gotta get used to this. Welded dip with a stage two clutch and a short throw with all solid mount. It's really good. Are they calling the cops on me? What's going on? Oh, dude, we gotta fix this wheel. Something is going on. A little bit of shake. A little bit. I don't want to put an exhaust on it, but it's so fucking loud. There's no way I can drive this anyway. Alright, serious reaction. How do you feel about that? It, it was crazy. It was like a feeling I've never felt before. <laughs> <laughs> it, but it drives nice, right? Oh no, it drives amazing. It's just a like just a little loud. A little loud. Just a little Might bit. Might have some gunshots coming out of it, but yeah. So this thing definitely shoots some good old flames. Like, definitely. Um, I don't think the volume from this car comes over on video, but my God, is it like one of the loudest things I've ever driven. Um, so it's super ignorant, it needs to have an exhaust, that's for sure. Um, but we threw the M-Pars on here because those Style 32s, they're cool, but they're vibrating like crazy, so I think, I'm hoping they just need to be balanced, otherwise there might be a serious bend, but when I went to look at them, they didn't look bent. This car's rubbing on the 9.5s with stock height. Um, but overall, I'm super impressed. The fact that, yes, and it does leak oil. I'm not gonna sit here and say that it doesn't. It leaks some oil, like a couple drops. I'm hoping, because what it looks like is it's actually coming from the dipstick tube. Um, it is a couple drops. Like if I was to move the car right now, you'd see like one or two drops. So, depending on how lazy I am, that may not get addressed for a while. Because I'm just happy to, to have the car operating. And, a, and if it's not too much oil, and I'm just checking it regularly, I'm just gonna bring uh, leave a little bit of oil in everyone's driveway or wherever I park. So, um, yeah, this car's gonna get a complete makeover pretty soon. I have the suspension, it's at the house. I just haven't installed it, obviously. And then I have headlights, of course, the hood I showed you. I got uh, corner lights to go in as well. Like, this car will look very fucking cool, but as of now, it doesn't look too bad. So, I'm gonna get some photos and I'll get back to you guys at the house. But just know that it made it, how far is it from the house here? Like It's like six, seven miles. Seven miles? Yeah. Yeah, so it's 
it's definitely proven at least on that drive and it was it was kind of a spirited drive i'm not dumping clutch or anything but i did get on it and it does not cut or break up like it did before bag successfully the only damage damage report is just this bit of rubbing and by like a little it's a lot cuz look at that that's a lot of a lot of tire so if anything these 235s will fit better on the wagon now because they were rubbing on the wagon before so this just shaved them down evenly for me while we were out so yeah um, what I'm gonna do next now that I know that this car works it Again, the oil thing is a real thing. I don't know, it's not leaking like a ton, so I'm just gonna keep oil with me when I drive it. And, nope, oh, he's checking it out. Oh shit. Got a couple drifts. Couple oh, no. drops though, right? Just a couple, right? Just a couple drops. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's dumping all the oil it has every time I park it, so. I honestly don't know where the leak is coming from, but that is why I'm gonna put it on jacks. Um, and I am going to bolt check the car. Don't worry. I'm going to go over everything. Um, I want to change the diff fluid. So I should, probably shouldn't drive it before I do that. Because I need to change the diff fluid. It's the only fluid I wasn't able to change. Because I have the. Uh, I didn't have the, the Allen size for that uh, drain and fill. But it got new transmission fluid. It got new engine oil of course again. After I dumped that oil the first time. Um, but man it runs good. All right, so I have the 325 back on jacks. I have all the wheels removed for the next video. So hopefully you guys are interested in what's to come because now I can finally say, you know, after putting 20 miles on the car today, uh, probably 30 actually just combined with, with everything. Um, you know, I, I think I've, I've gotten at least past that initial point where I know that the car now works. It does what it's supposed to do. It runs really, really good. Uh, so I want to bring you guys like a POV driving video at some point, um, but I'm just not ready for that yet because while the car runs great, it idles great, we still have some things to work out. Um, I still need to make it a little bit more road legal before I start driving it and get ahead of myself. So we have a leak of some sort coming from somewhere. It kind of seems like, uh, like I put my finger in the, in the puddle that it's developed and um, it seems like ATF. So it's either transmission fluid or power steering fluid or maybe it's oil that just smells like ATF. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but hopefully, fingers crossed, it's one of those things. So because I know I will get questions, if you guys want my honest like idea or, or theory as to what happened with this car initially, I honestly think either the coil packs were just somehow some way bad, which seems weird, or not having that additional ground really like like fucked them up. As soon as I added that ground and swapped valve covers, I've this car and the 30 miles that I put on it today did not skip a beat, aside from the leak. This is all from today, so this, this needs to be solved because this is just the car parked here twice. Um, so it definitely leaks a little bit. So I'm gonna, Figure that out. But as far as what happened, I think either it was a grounding issue, I mean, adding that ground seemingly fixed it, or those quo packs were bad from the jump, um, which I also doubt. So I really do think it was more of a grounding issue. That's the only thing that changed. It's the only thing I did. I replaced the spark plugs with different coil packs, a different valve cover, and a new gasket. So this car definitely needs an exhaust, like desperately, it needs an exhaust, probably before anything. I cannot believe we didn't get pulled over today. Uh, normally I'm a pretty big fan of a loud, ignorant car, but this car is too loud. 
Uh, so it needs a section three of some sort. I don't know what I'm gonna do for that yet. Either order something, which I'm not super stoked on. It's a drift car and I've spent so much money at this point. I think I'd rather just hack up like an M3 muffler or something. I think we'll, we'll probably come up with something a little bit more creative than buying something off the shelf. So the main thing is figuring out where it's leaking, find that, um, whether it's whether it's something small like uh, the dipstick tube needs a gasket or if it's something major like the oil pan gasket or the rear main, God forbid, it is what it is and it has to happen. At least I know that the car works and if it takes a weekend of dropping a transmission or pulling the front subframe, it is what it is. I'm just gonna have to do it. At first I thought I was gonna get away with this leak for a little bit, but it's something I'll probably have to deal with rather soon. So with that all being said, hopefully you guys are excited for the next video because We'll be doing coilovers, finally. We'll be doing suspension with this car. I won't look like a monster truck. I'll be rolling or cutting quarter panels. Haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet. Um, but yeah, some cool stuff coming for this car. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Anything you do does help my channel grow, whether that's like, comment, subscribe, whatever you wanna do, share the video, it all helps. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.